Choosing piano mics is tricky because you've got a big instrument and you've got a lot of different considerations. Are you gonna keep the lid up? Are you gonna put the lid down? Can you put mics inside the piano? Do you have a mounting system or do you just have the microphones themselves? Well, today I'm gonna to talk about some of the microphones that I encountered when I was helping a church in Sedalia, Missouri, and they are grand piano. Now, this is a church that has a traditional service, so they're mostly doing piano as a company with choir. So that's what influenced our decisions, but I thought I'd give you a sneak peek into the channels that I recorded for that and so that you can compare and contrast these two different microphones. Now, one thing that you'll notice with piano microphones is their price can vary wildly. You can use just a pair of SM57s and those will work, or you can spend up to $3,000 on a specially made pair of microphones that are made just to go inside a piano. They don't really have any alternate uses unless you got really creative. So how are you gonna decide which are the best for you? Well, today we're gonna take a listening example to hear the different microphones, and then I'll kind of give you my background information and ideas of what I think works well in different contexts. So after we listen, I'll tell you which mics are which, but for now we'll just see mic one and mic two, and then there's a third PZM mic that we have in there. I'll go ahead and break that one to you. I believe it was the Shure Beta 91. So it's typically a kick drum microphone, but it works in all kinds of applications. So it was just set down inside the piano and it gave another tonal variation that we could blend in with the close mics that are on the hammers. As far as placement goes, the placement is within a few inches of each other. So I'll show you a little clip of where the mics are placed and then you'll be able to see which one is which and we can compare and contrast and you can even put in the comments what you think is gonna work well for you. Oh, and one more thing before we get to the examples. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. My name is James and I help worship leaders and sound techs make great audio decisions so that you can reduce friction and distraction in your church services. So let's compare these piano mics and see what we think. So to me, the second pair, the pair on piano two, seem a little bit brighter and so that they can cut through the mix a little bit more. Whereas the mics that are on piano one, they're a little bit darker and a little bit fuller. So it depends on the context and what you were going for. With this particular church, they're amplifying the piano to be an accompaniment to the choir. The choir is the main thing and that's what's getting you most of the fullness from the mix. So to me, the mics that are a little bit brighter and maybe a little less full in the mid-range fit a little bit better to cut through without having to have all that sonic overtones and kind of clutteriness in the low mids to stick out and kind of compete with the energy from the choir. So for this particular instance, I might choose piano two over piano one. Now, if I had a singer-songwriter or a, a piano-led worship leader, and they were mostly doing piano by themselves, there wasn't a big band behind them, it might make more sense to go with a tone more like the ones that are on piano one. 
those are a little bit fuller and piano players and worship leaders that are accompanying themselves are looking for that fullness. They need that tonal warmth to kind of surround and support their voice because they're singing by themselves or maybe just with one or two others. So context matters in this case. If I had a big band with a bunch of electric guitars, I would still probably again go for the brighter microphones. And after we cut back, will reveal which ones are which and then let you go back and listen one more time. The other thing is that the PZM that's in the tail of the piano or just set on the soundboard, kind of between the tail and the crook of the piano, really add a little bit more mid-range and fullness and you can basically turn it into like tone on a fader. So I could blend that in as much as I wanted to get a little bit more mid-range out of it or if things are getting cluttery, I could pull that back and let the brightness of the closer mics nearer the hammers really take care of the rest. So for the big reveal, piano mics number one are the Earthworks piano bar, or whatever they call it, but the bar with the piano mics mounted onto it from Earthworks, great set of microphones. They are tonally different from the Audix SCX25A that were piano mics number two. So you can see that just a different microphone, not necessarily more expensive or less expensive, it just has to fit the right context. And that's what you have to do is use your ears and take your brain out of it of, oh, this costs more, so it should be better. And again, context is everything. So you have to decide what piano mics are gonna work well for you. And here are just two that I compared and hopefully you can now make better decisions when you pull up piano mics on your piano. So now that you know, let's listen to them back to back one more time and I'll try to get the levels matched as best I can. Hey, if you liked this video, be sure to smash that thumbs up for the algorithm. Put a comment down below on what you think of the different mics and what you would do with them. Again, these are no EQ, we didn't treat them at all, but you can see what you liked and what you didn't. Let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.